In your book, you mention that there are people who are luckier than others and that the people who are luckier owe or need to do a little bit more. And I found that really fascinating. And I kind of kept reading that commentary. And I, and I love for our audience here and virtually for you to explain that a little bit more to them. Because I think it's a really interesting concept that may spur some of Joel's points about action uh, and maybe a point of action. Right. So as quickly as I can explain this, a um, sociologist named Robert Frank wrote this book on luck, um, which really was very meaningful to me. Um, he was playing tennis and had a heart attack. And um, there happened to be an ambulance right nearby because it had responded to another accident. That ambulance got to him in like two minutes and saved his life. And if it had taken five minutes, he would have died. And so he woke up and had this very lovely realization, which was from that point on, every moment in his life that he had of any kind was due purely to luck. And that led him to the conclusion that people underestimate the degree to which they have been lucky. And the book is really fascinating because it talks about um, various famous people, like Bill Gates, right? Bill Gates, a uh, genius, a uh, visionary, all of those things. Bill Gates also happened to go to a high school, I think, that had like the very first computer that ever existed <laughs> was in his high school. And then he went to Harvard, and Harvard had like the very first primitive like internal internet that ever existed. And so to some degree, his career is due to good fortune. Just like he worked hard to get into Harvard, but he could have worked equally hard and gone to Yale, and then he wouldn't have had that exact situation unfold in front of him, right? Like, that, would, that was luck that Harvard happened to have that thing. And what the point that Frank makes is that people don't tend to ascribe their success to luck because it makes them feel like they're saying, I don't deserve what I got. Um, and that is anathema to most successful people. The idea that you would, how dare you say, I worked hard and I blah, 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 blah. But it's like, yeah, also you got super lucky, right? Warren Buffett, alone amongst billionaires in the world, at least to my understanding, talks about this constantly. He talks about winning what he calls the ovarian lottery, <laughs> which is to say he was born a white male in America at the moment he was born and that removed from his life a thousand obstacles that other people would have had to jump over simply to come up to even with him in terms of the beginning of his life. That's a lovely observation for anyone to have. It's an even lovelier observation for like the seventh richest man in the world to have because he is acknowledging that this isn't just all because of his brilliant genius, right? So I have thought about that a lot in my life, in my own life, in my own career, about the degree to which not, yes, I worked hard and I, I did all my homework. I was very nerdy and I read all the books and I got good grades on all the tests. But also at various moments in my life, and I list 20 of them in the book, something happened that had nothing to do with how hard I worked or how uh, brilliant I am or anything else that just the, the, the Next card on the deck was, for me, was an ace, like, t like a thousand times in a row. So understanding that and really deeply internalizing it, I think, is, allows us to approach something closer to what I would consider to be justice. Because it gives you empathy for people who maybe are just as brilliant as you are and worked just as hard as you are, but didn't win the ovarian lottery and didn't have the next card on the, that came up was a seven of clubs and they really needed an ace and, they, and things didn't break the right way. So I believe that when you're calculating what it is that you owe to other people, there are minimums that we all face. This is not a, this is not a situation where if you're an unlucky person and whatever that means, that you get to do whatever you want. There are contractualist minimums Tim Scanlon would say there are virtue minimums, Aristotle would say deontological minimums, utilitarian minimums, however you care to calculate them. There are certain things we all have to do to participate in society to be good people. After that, if you are Warren Buffett or me, uh, there's probably a bigger gap between Warren Buffett and me, <laughs> uh, or anyone who, who got a bunch of aces off the top of the deck, you owe a little bit more to other people. I think of it as paying off the gods of luck. That's how I think of it. I think of it as I got super lucky 
in a number of different ways, and when it comes time to take a moral accounting of my behavior, I should be judged much, much, much more harshly than, than people who didn't get as lucky as I did. So that doesn't just mean you have to give more money to charity, although it does mean that. Um, <laughs> but it also means just go, like I can afford in my life to do more than a lot of other people in whatever way you mean do more, volunteer, pay money, like hold myself to a higher standard. I can afford to take a few days off and fly to New York and come to this event without it ruining my life. Most people can't do that. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't do it. And so I believe that your, what you owe to other people scales up as, as you consider how lucky you've been in your life. I believe it, it really scales up. And I think that the people who are at the top of the systems of power and of status and of prestige and of money and of everything else should be judged accordingly. And I think it's fair to hold those people to a much higher account than we hold the average citizen. That's my belief.